we are live anki uh good evening to all our yes first business customers uh greetings from yes bank hope you and your family are doing well during the pandemic situation uh we have rolled out a circle led offer for all you customers so that you can enjoy the best of the benefits across all the products that yes bank has to offer for today's webinar we have mr avinash godkindi he is the md ceo for zagil he will take us through digitization and automation to scale business he will also help us understand how technology can be a game changer in sustaining business during covid 19 Mr Avinash ha- is an international fintech and payments leader with over a decade of uh, you know 15 years of work ex across 12 countries five continents uh, he has been ceo of zagil for past 8 years and focuses on business development growth and new opportunities banking and network partnerships go to market strategy and operations prior to zagil avinash had launched and ran a city bank premium mile credit card in india and was a product across premium mile avinash has done electrical and electronics engineering from bangalore university and mba from uh, university in chicago both of solo business avinash's interests include a variety of sports reading mu- music current affairs traveling running and spending time with family and friends and i'm pretty sure avinash can help us out with how to do the same business during this pandemic uh, so avinash uh, over to you uh, you can please uh, start interacting with our customers uh, once you're done with your presentation we'll open the forum for uh, q and a where uh, you know we'll have some doubts and queries that can be resolved by our uh, for our customers over to you sir thanks uh, thank you for the warm introduction ankit and uh, thank you to yes bank for giving me this opportunity to speak to all your yes fast customers uh, i genuinely hope that uh, all of you are doing good all of you are staying safe uh, and all of you are also trying to analyze how uh, you can reshape your businesses uh during this pandemic uh, this pandemic uh, has indeed given a very unique opportunity to to take a pause and relook at uh, you know where we are as a, as a, as uh, as a nation as as a as a business uh and to reassess uh, how we would want to scale and grow it's uh rather than trying to you know give you a complex framework and very uh, convoluted uh, jargon which is uh, you know uh, generally mbas from especially international business schools and uh, uh, people like me are accused of what my intent would be today is to share with you my thoughts uh, in a very simple and lucid way uh, with uh, the idea and desire to provoke some action some thought and action uh, on your end and uh, to learn from you as well through your questions uh, uh, we are also a fast growing business we've uh, been partnering with uh, yes bank for many many years now uh, we essentially are a b2b fintech company digitizing spends uh, so there's a lot for us to learn from uh, customers like you as well uh, so would like to keep it light would like to keep it interactive and uh, would like to provoke some thoughts and hopefully some action uh, so i'm just going to share my screen uh, ankit if you can confirm to me that my slides are visible that will be great can you see my slides uh, ankit so i can still see uh, yes yes we can see the slides now great so um i'll just dwell when uh, the topic that we are going to discuss today is about digitization and automation specifically to scale businesses right so how do we use these uh, tools uh, to scale businesses end of the day there's a lot of you know jargon that is associated as i mentioned around uh, digitization automation technology and uh, large companies and uh, you know industry experts have often used it to their advantage the uh, crucial thing i think is for uh, smes and businesses startups to understand where the opportunity lies for us to assess what the landscape really is and to make sense of it in a very simple way and quick way so that we can take advantage of the opportunities that are being thrown uh, by technology in case uh, we are unable to do this 
the reality of the fact is that the larger companies and other competitors that you know all of us have in our businesses are going to uh, uh, you know leave us behind uh, and take advantage of these technologies and these changes in the world and consumer behavior patterns and uh, obviously uh, they would uh, gain on us in terms of market share and uh, you know uh, business edge so i'm going to just share a very simple set of slides with you um, so the first question that came to my mind when i wanted i was given this uh, topic was one of the things which a lot of businesses are always asking is why should we digitize and automate right uh, my business is doing good my business is running well uh, I'm talking of pre-pandemic times here, uh, and even during pandemic, some of your businesses might be doing uh, good, or you might be doing better than your competitors. So why should you digitize and automate? Why take this, uh, you know, headache at all? My simple response to you is what McKinsey published, and it's a big eye opener. Um, India is the second fastest digitizing economy in the world. so whether you like it or not the nation has chosen to digitize itself right india is a digital country india is becoming more and more digital by the day uh, if you don't believe me just have a conversation uh, if you are uh, in your 40s or 50s or even 30s and if you have you know your own kids or if you have your uh, kids of your neighbors and family and friends just talk to them for 5 minutes and uh, compare it Uh, with how you consumed uh, uh, you know information and how they consume information how we used to play games or sport and how they play games or sport you just compare your childhood with them uh, you will realize that it's all digital it's all um, a lot of it is automated they have figured out how to use all the gadgets much better than a lot of us so the simple point that i'm trying to make here is this is not an option this is something that we all have to do uh, as businesses probably we are better off embracing it uh, and when we embrace it uh, we're going to be able to obviously do a much better job than others uh, in in our uh, industry uh, in taking it further right so just to you know take that thought further concretely what does digitization really do for us as businesses uh, the key that digitization does for businesses is it increases efficiency at the core of it is that you are going to as a business owner as a business person you are going to both save time and money it's as simple as that cutting aside all the other paraphernalia and the glamorous stuff you are able to focus on your business you are able to focus on what is crucial in terms of strategy in terms of negotiations partnerships uh, because by automating your uh, processes by automating your uh, systems you are going to be able to save both time and money right the other piece which is probably uh, overlooked in a very big way uh, at least historically in india is what it does to our businesses in terms of business intelligence and the data that you know we all capture from uh, in our businesses but that business intelligence may not necessarily be uh, you know uh, captured in a in a single database or in a single data set Uh, so that you are able to then take uh, advantage of it and leverage it in terms of insights and monetize that data typically what happens is that it's the larger companies it's the larger you know the the global companies which are much much better at this simply because they've invested time effort and some money to be able to do this the other thing which i want to touch upon is that if you pay attention to this this is not so uh difficult as it may seem it requires a lot of discipline uh to be able to you know capture your data and you need to have patience to be able to uh, uh you know invest time effort for a few months uh, or maybe a year or so before you start seeing results but the reality is that over the course of a 3 or 5 year time you will start seeing dramatic uh, benefits in terms of uh, how you approach your business simply because you'll have a far better a view of what your business is and how your business is shaping and how your industry is moving right 
The third thing I think which uh, is becoming even more important as we uh, get into this pandemic is security and compliance. Uh, as more and more of uh, our businesses are becoming digital uh, and the nation is becoming digital with Atmanirbhar Bharat, with more and more uh, you know, opportunities that the government is opening up for businesses which are digital in nature, it, it makes perfect sense to both uh, embrace it as well as to adhere to all the compliances that the government today demands, uh, whether it is in terms of GST filing, advanced taxes, etc. All of us are uh, aware of it. Those aspects become much, much easier if you already have uh, a digitized business. Uh, you may not be selling digital solutions. But if your business is digitized in its approach to capturing data, storing data, all these compliances become that much more easier rather than uh, working on it on a paper uh, uh, model. The next question that that you know I was uh, asked when I spoke to other you know as many of our customers uh, when I asked them why haven't you done more on digitizing is. The question that came to uh, uh, me back was, how do we go about doing it? You know, there's no book, there's no document uh, which teaches us how to digitize and automate. Uh, and any consultants that we tend to hire uh, do have a very corporate or enterprise uh, approach to digitizing and automating, which may not be suitable for you know uh, mid-sized businesses smaller businesses uh, because we look at uh, approaches which give us value for money uh, and are less on you know theory and more and more on uh, practice right so how do we go about doing uh, a digitization exercise without taking a very theoretical uh, approach to it so i try to go about doing this and build a very simple framework uh, this is something that i i uh, drew uh, on my own uh, through my experiences as to how a business could go about digitizing and automating. Uh, it's a very simple five-step process, but I think it, as a framework, it may help you uh, approach this within your teams, within your uh, you know organizations as to how you would go about doing it. Uh, please note each business is different, each industry is different. There are no right or wrong answers, but this is a, a, an approach, a framework that I would uh, suggest and recommend. Right? First of all, I think the crucial piece is, as I mentioned, all businesses are unique. Uh, all uh, business founders, owners, promoters also have their own approach to running their businesses. Uh, so you need to analyze your business model, your sources of revenue and expenses, see how your business is currently uh, structured, break it down into smaller pieces right? Uh, of 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 activities and see which of these activities are currently uh, digitally uh, you know enabled or are digital and which of them have a lot of manual work this is an exercise that you know you will have to do uh, yourself or engage you know your team members to do this uh, i wouldn't recommend necessarily bringing in an external consultant unless your business is a very large and complex business simply because the time taken for somebody coming in from outside to understand your business and to recommend this itself will take probably a few weeks or months right and in this pandemic you may not want to invest capital for consultants to be able to do this this is not a tough exercise you know your business best uh, better than anybody else and you should be able to spend maybe a, 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 a couple of uh, weeks just breaking down your businesses into different uh, set of activities that your teams currently do and uh, you know uh, be able to figure out which are those pieces where there is a lot of repeat and manual tasks right uh, and figure out you know what are the inefficiencies in your supply chain in your value chain uh, this is a boring exercise in some ways. We all like to uh, think of newer opportunities, uh, but it's a very important uh, activity. This is something which, uh, you know, it can help you in a very big way in the long term. So uh, my uh, suggestion to you is to invest the time and energy to be able to do this, even though this may not be a very uh, 
uh, exciting uh, task because there is real money to be saved here right and real growth to be uh, extracted out of this the third thing is very important is to start defining rules you know this this is something which businesses have been doing for you know even 50 years ago 100 years ago 500 years ago where an owner a founder a promoter has uh, decided that you know what are the rules on the basis of which his or her business is going to operate um uh, today sadly i think given the fact that we are in the mirage of you know mirage of half technology lack of technology a lot of businesses may not have very clearly uh defined uh, rules as to what is uh, the process in which a particular activity happens and doesn't happen this is probably more true for startups and younger organizations uh, uh, and probably less true for established uh, companies with you know which are older than maybe 10 years 15 years those are companies where they have uh, sort of made these rules even though if these rules may be on uh, paper and not through a, a digitized system right once you've done this activity i think you will be able to yourself figure out what are the kind of platforms and what are the kind of partnerships that are required and technology solutions that your businesses require to be able to digitize more and more of your value chain if you are able to at this stage not identify what are the platforms or what are the solutions that you need to uh, uh, you know digitize then it can either be one of the two things one maybe the previous steps that you were supposed to take weren't done in a very scientific and organized way or that you could at this stage look at uh, you know uh, involving a consultant or a, a, an expert who can then recommend to you what are the kind of solutions that you uh, could uh, look at in the market for those particular pieces of work typically given how much information today is available on the internet you should yourself or your team members should yourself themselves be able to uh, go online and uh, figure out for a certain set of activities if you want so for example if you if you have a supply chain which is very very uh, uh, inefficient very clearly you need to think of uh, you know uh, uh, looking at a erp solution right now your scale may not be something that may justify it but you'll have to figure out what are the proxies that are there right there are a lot of companies which offer solutions which may not be full fledged erps but do help smes in uh, uh, helping their uh, uh, you know documenting their inventory supply chain etc similarly if your expenses and the way you are managing your expenses is uh, not very organized you have a, a, a set of uh, you know customers you have a set of vendors who are scattered and those you know payments are coming across from all different times and uh, your payments are going out in a different uh, varied way everything is being stored on excel then probably you need to invest on an expense management platform an expense management platform which will allow you to collate all your expenses business expenses employee expenses on a single dashboard uh, and make it very easy for you to uh, uh, access this information at any given point of time right so you will be able to identify which are the kind of solutions that you need to uh go about doing it uh lastly of course which is the toughest task and which is the, the task which takes the most amount of time is to actually be part of the implementation of this solution not to depend only on the supplier of the solution the technology vendor but make sure that you and your teams are part of this implementation and to test the solution very very thoroughly so as long as you are able to do that uh, you will start seeing value getting extracted in a very very uh, quick manner uh, by you know going ahead and uh, implementing these solutions right i also want to touch upon why this has become increasingly important today uh, given uh, you know the corona virus pandemic the covid times why now i i uh, have also heard of a contrarian view which is to say just survive your business in these years don't try anything new do not try to implement anything afresh and just get through these next 12 months if you've survived these next 12 months uh, you know that itself is a big win uh, well i would not want to debate that i'm not necessarily saying it is right or wrong but my uh, sense uh, uh, 
as, as somebody who's who who's you know uh, running a business is that uh, typically in my experience businessmen uh, businessmen and women are restless by nature if you ask somebody who's running a business to just sit quietly for 12 months and not think of how to improve his or her business uh, it's very very difficult for us to do that uh, we want to constantly figure out how i can extract more value uh, from my business how i can make my business better how i can grow my business right so uh, in some ways the pandemic because of uh, the impact of uh, travel because of the impact of uh, uh, rather absence of travel uh, because of the impact in terms of how uh, global uh, you know supply chains have got disrupted it has given in some ways a very good opportunity for uh, business leaders to relook at their businesses and say how can we do things better both in the medium uh, and short term but also in the long term right so i think why now now very clearly covid-19 has really really accelerated globalization trends uh if you see how uh, uh, consumers and how businesses have become so very keen to digitize and uh, to actually you know things like social distancing for example if you have a if you have a store uh, imagine how uh, your business has changed in the last 4 months right uh, i was talking to somebody who owns a, a, a business a brand um, so she essentially has uh, has a business which uh, uh, supplies organic chicken and she told me that her entire business is got transformed because they started to supply in a very very big way directly to apartment blocks and houses right large housing societies so the whole you know cold storage the uh, modern retail formats everything else has moved away and they are now able to directly through these housing societies actually engage with consumers they are on the verge of you know building an app which will allow consumers to uh, key in their apartment society details to share their uh, you know uh, coordinates their city their you know uh, pin code and basis that these uh, this company is looking to start delivering uh, their their products um, even after the pandemic because their their uh, biggest benefit is that they are direct getting direct feedback from their uh, consumers as to how their product is and how their product can be improved uh, and they are putting this into a uh, uh, data warehouse where they are actually storing these responses from consumers with the consumers will make these responses on app and through their purchases and now they're going to analyze that data and say how can i introduce higher more premium products better quality products or position my products better in such a way that i am able to command a higher price um, obviously this also helps them uh, gain much greater brand loyalty so the reason why i'm giving you this example which is uh, which is uh, you know 6 months ago nobody would have thought an organic chicken brand would be thinking how do i automate and how do i go digital right pre pandemic uh, they were very happy well established and you know uh, doing a decent job in terms of their business but of course they were getting more and more squished by you know global brands coming in uh, startups coming in they were always fighting you know the forces of digitization uh, and now they have said that we can also embrace these uh, and we can also benefit from digitalization rather than always trying to figure out how do we fight it why not uh, you know embrace digitization and automation and use it to our advantage we have a great product a great brand how do we leverage that right the other trend that has uh, really really accelerated again is consumers have got very very free uh, so i'll give you another example right uh, how many uh, Uh, senior citizens that you are today seeing who have started to do facetime whatsapp a video uh, you started to see senior citizens now actually start ordering online uh, things which were not happening in the last you know until you know covid came in simply because uh, they they are safer they are they are 
easier to access and people are now realizing that you know you can get a much bigger selection of products and services uh, through the uh, digital medium the other benefit that businesses obviously have through this is that businesses can definitely look to uh, access global markets right today if you look at it uh, as as a business if you're not a digital business typically you have not looked at accessing global markets but because of the pandemic and because you are now in a in a phase where you have to digitize why not take advantage of the digitization and start attacking markets outside india as well this is very much in line with what the uh, prime minister has also asked businesses in india to do which is to build world class products and take those products around the world rather than india importing products from other countries can we manufacture here and take those products outside offer those create those innovative solutions and take them global so that you know instead of we being a country which is importing more uh, we start becoming a net exporter right the other other reality of it uh, which you know i i don't want to emphasize too much but all of us feel this all of us who are in business always are looking over our shoulder and rightly so because the world is changing so fast because you if you do not digitize now your competition will definitely take advantage of technology and completely uh, disrupt your business right so uh, as harsh as it may sound uh, the reality is uh, that we all who are doing business in 2020 do not have an option but to digitize and automate uh, because globally companies are doing this indian other other indian companies are doing this uh, so you have to be able to digitize and automate the last point of these four c's is compliance you know uh, and you will actually see this uh, happen more and more today uh, i was participating in the general body meeting of the iamai iamai stands for the internet and mobile association of india it is the august body of all internet and mobile uh, based technology companies uh, in india and one of the things which came out very clearly in the uh, in the general body meeting uh, uh, was that the government and the regulatory agencies are pushing harder and more for everything to be digitized and brought on to you know data which is stored locally in india so that they have access to this data to be able to assess uh, you know whether our businesses are being conducted in the right way and if they are being conducted in the right way the government uh, is keen or looking to support these businesses through you know easier access to capital through easier access to uh, you know markets uh etc uh including government contracts government orders uh and of course if 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 th- there is something which is not being done correctly again if it's digitized and it's online uh the government is willing to give an opportunity for businesses to correct those mistakes the problem comes when it's not digitized and when it's not automated that the issue or the uh, problem does not get identified and later then you know there is there are heavy penalties that uh, we end up uh, paying so in a nutshell there are four reasons one is covid 19 the other is customers the third is competition and the fourth is you know being able to be compliant i'll briefly touch very briefly because i don't want this to be about fintech and banking i can you know obviously speak a lot about fintech and banking and digitization that's happening in our space uh, fintech uh, and banking industry in general uh, are industries which are uh, uh, you know getting transformed uh, dramatically by technology and uh, automation uh, banking per se has got transformed by fintech is how i would put it uh, banks are more uh, today uh technology companies data companies which happen to offer uh banking services uh, rather than the other way around uh, and yes bank as as all of us know is probably uh, at the very forefront of uh, offering uh, uh high end technology solutions to uh, to various businesses uh so i just want to 
talk of a few trends uh, and then I'll leave it uh, in the Q&A for people to ask me more questions if they're interested, right? So what's happening on the, on the fintech and uh, banking side is that one of the biggest things that is going to uh, come and disrupt the way you uh, do your banking is open banking. Uh, the whole concept of open banking or new banking I'll, I'll stick to open banking as a phrase here because it applies more to SMEs and businesses is that you as a business own your data, right? All your information is owned by you as a business. And even if it is stored and managed by different financial institutions, whether it's an NBFC, whether it's a bank, whether it's an insurance company, uh, it doesn't matter. You own it and you as a, as a, as a business should have access to all this information. Uh, at any given point of time, and you should be allowed to, uh, you know, make decisions as to where your money should be and how your money should be used or deployed at any given point of time in a very easy and accessible manner, right? That is what open banking is. That's what the concept of open banking is. How you implement it is is a, uh, is a technical solution, but all the buzz and the hype around it is uh, just that. It's actually a very simple concept that the data is owned by you as a consumer or a business. And hence, as the owner of the data, whether it's stored by any financial institution, it doesn't matter. You own it and hence you should have the ability to access that data easily, freely and make decisions basis that. Right? The other thing, of course, which is very, very uh, uh, global uh, in nature, but also equally disruptive is uh, blockchain. Uh, blockchain, I truly believe, is going to make uh, the way we conduct businesses very, very, uh, uh, very, very differently in the coming years. It's, it's also going to make it much, much more easy for businesses because through the concept of a block and linking different blocks through chains, which are easily accessed and viewed by, you know, all parties who are, who are linked to that particular transaction, uh, it is going to eliminate or it's going to reduce the role of intermediaries who act as trust custodians. Now, what, what I essentially mean is that let's say I'm wanting to transact with another business which is uh, based out of, say, uh, the US. And I don't know, you know, whether that, that company can be trusted or not. So if I have to make a payment to them beforehand, I, there are a whole host of, uh, you know, banking instruments and other instruments that are used like LCs and, you know, uh, letter of credits and uh, various other instruments that have been historically uh, used to ensure that there is trust between these two entities. Now, blockchain and these type of technologies are, are going to make it much, much more easier for these entities to actually transact contracts online uh, through the block and thereby reducing the need for multiple intermediaries. Uh, this is this is something which is already happening uh, around the world and across industries, uh, and you will see more and more of this, uh, uh, in, you know, disrupting the way we do business in the coming years. Uh, coming closer to home uh, in India, one of the things which is happening, which is very beautiful, is that uh, know your customer. That is KYC process is being uh, completely disrupted. Uh, RBI has allowed uh, for consumers video KYC, uh, Aadhaar based KYC again has been there around for some time uh, and because of the pandemic you are going to see more and more of this uh, being done in a digital way and less of this being uh, done in person. Uh, it's a huge opportunity because it allows again uh, banks to service businesses across, uh, across the country without having to actually open those many branches or those many, uh, you know, centers. Uh, and obviously, fintechs have a big role to play here. Uh, it also allows, uh, you know, an SME, which may not be based in a, in a tier two or a tier one or a tier three town, to still access or get banking services from a, a, a bank which they, they want to, uh, you know, bank with. Right? So you're not necessarily uh, restricted to having to bank with only banks which are there in your town. Uh, but in the coming days and months and years, uh, 
it's going to be possible to open an account in a bank uh, which does not have a branch in your uh, town right lastly i'll just very briefly touch upon uh, things like ai and machine learning uh, these are things which are being used below the surface uh, if you do not have a tech business it's not possibly uh, something that you directly realize but if you see uh, you know all most banks today offer uh, a, a chat bot uh, when you call the call center you you don't directly start speaking to the person earlier it was an ivr uh, service now you actually have a, 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 an avatar a chat bot Uh, kind of an entity which talks to you or engages with you uh, and is able to resolve a lot of queries uh, you know without you having to actually speak to a phone banking officer the reason why i'm bringing this up is uh, this is going to be something which is going to disrupt more and more of your businesses uh, as you service your customers uh, do think about how you can use some of these technologies you don't need to be masters at these technologies there are companies who can help you create solutions using these technologies but if you think that you know your customers will like to uh, be serviced 24 bar 7 uh, without language restrictions uh, and you know uh, in 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 a digital manner and if you are you know believing that your access to markets will increase through that then do consider embracing some of these technologies because these are not just mere jargons uh, just look at your car 30 years ago your car was uh, 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 more of a mechanical uh, system uh, today possibly uh, if you look at it it's actually an electrical and more an electronic and computing system right uh, you're not actually sitting in a mechanical uh, system and those of you who are in engineers would possibly uh, identify more closely with what i'm speaking what you are sitting in today is is an electronics uh you know it's full of electronics and it's driven and controlled primarily by electronics right so with that uh, i will conclude my uh, uh my talk and uh, i'll open the floor for questions Hello So I'm going to take a few questions that have come in uh one question which is very interesting is that can digitization and automation also make businesses look future ready for gen x uh absolutely uh, I touched upon this that consumers have started to be, uh, demand more and more digital solutions um when you talk of gen x when you talk of millennials i spoke about our kids uh, the way they react to technology is very differently from how we react to technology and uh, absolutely this is something which people expect uh, from businesses the other question which is being asked is that is digitization also linked to being expensive that's not true in the long term you'll actually see that you're going to save a lot more uh, in terms of cost in terms of time uh, it may require a certain amount of uh, capital expenditure in upfront uh, certain investment uh, but over time you will see that you know uh, this will become much much more cost effective in the long run for you the other question i have here is what are the security aspects to consider when going for digitizing automation this is a very important point uh, when we are looking at uh, you know solution providers who are providing to you solutions uh, do bear in mind that you may not necessarily uh, be able to make a very uh, quick assessment of uh, who's providing you the best solution merely through a sales uh, presentation right so do look at what kind of other customers have they serviced generally if the the service provider has uh, serviced a lot more of smes or if they have you know been able to cater to a few enterprise customers that's always a good uh, good uh, uh, you know 
indicator that the security settings and security uh, uh, aspects have been taken care of. Uh, and the best way to look at it is uh, probably the, 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 the entities which are most secure are banks. Uh, and if banks are, uh, uh, you know, recommending a particular solution because banks by nature are risk havers uh, and have very, very strong, uh, you know, uh, requirements in terms of security and compliance, if a bank is actually uh, recommending a solution to you, you can be more or less sure that from a security perspective, at least, that's going to be a very, very, very good solution for you. Right? Mm. So one of the uh, questions that's been asked is that what are the parameters to be looked upon uh, to identify a technology partner for digitization? Um, see, there are many, many things that you should look at. Um, but as I, as I mentioned uh, during the uh, previous response, uh, are you able to trust that partner to deliver? Uh, because you may not necessarily all said and done have the bandwidth to be able to assess whether the solution is really uh, ideal for you and is the partner who's selling the solution to you uh, really going to be able to deliver what they claim they would be able to deliver. Hence, uh, it's very important that you uh, are able to look at, uh, you know, other surrogates like, you know, is this company already servicing n number of uh, enterprise customers or a large number of SMEs or is a, is a trusted partner of yours like a bank actually endorsing the solution and saying, hey, look, this is a good solution, this works uh, and you should actually try and implement it. That Those are, those are uh, very good uh, ways. Of course, the other way is to actually go ahead and uh, look under the hood and look at the nitty gritties of the technology used by the, uh, the, the service provider, uh, do a very in-depth uh, analysis of that solution. But typically, you know, those things are uh, things which companies who actually do technology themselves would possibly be able to do it. Um, if you're not a tech company yourselves, it's typically quite difficult to invest time, effort and energy and to, uh, you know, do a very thorough assessment. Uh, on your own. So it's probably better to look at uh, surrogates, which might tell you uh, how to uh, go about it. One of the questions that somebody has asked here is that they are looking for an SF, uh, MSME loan. Um, now, again, this is the reason why I want to highlight this is uh, if you had um, all your data digitized and all your data uh, available, especially through an open banking type of a platform, uh, trust me, your ability to be able to uh, secure a loan would be much, much higher because today people are have uh, are looking at other surrogates to lend to you beyond the balance sheet itself uh, because the balance sheet is, is a snapshot of how your business looks at a particular point in time, typically end of the financial year. Pandemic has changed that fundamentally. Even otherwise, businesses are changing so rapidly that your balance sheet might be looking great, uh, you know, at the end of uh, the last financial year. But six months down the line into this year, maybe it's completely got uh, hit, right? Uh, or maybe your business actually has benefited from the pandemic. You're in healthcare, you're in maybe ed tech, you're in some space which uh, it could be even just a grocery shop which is positioned in the right way and is doing a great job delivering to neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, apartment blocks, right? So in, in, in that scenario, maybe your business has started to look much better. Uh, but to be able to borrow, if you don't have your data as to how much sales you're actually generating and what's the kind of digital payments that you're actually receiving the cash flows, uh, it would be very difficult for a bank to go ahead or any NBFC to go ahead and lend to you higher amounts. So uh, if you do need a loan, there is no, you know, shortcut or a, a, a magic wand. Uh, while I would encourage you to please speak to your uh, RM of uh, Yes Bank, but also do consider getting onto an open banking platform and you know, digitizing more and more of your uh, business so that the next time you need uh, more capital, it will be much easier for you to get capital and you would get capital at a much cheaper rate. Uh, one of the things which a lot of businesses don't realize is that your 
interest cost will go down if you are able to be show much more transparently how well your business is doing so uh, that is one thing which i think a lot of businesses globally have benefited and i'm sure as we go along indian businesses will benefit as well the last question that i have here as of now is uh, does dig digitization change our modes of interaction absolutely uh, digitization completely uh, changes our uh, entire outlook of interacting with people right uh, if if you are looking at this webinar itself today uh, how many people would i have been able to address if we were doing this in person in mumbai versus how many people we are able to today touch uh, because we are doing a webinar and you know it's going across the country at least right so um, digitization fundamentally alters our reach uh, is it possibly easier for us to sit uh, in a, in a in a room or a conference room and for me to engage with you maybe uh, but that's also because we are not as as used to uh, engaging with each other on digital platforms as much as maybe our uh, you know uh, younger generations right so if you look at uh, kids who are in their teens or uh, even pre teens they are so comfortable doing a zoom call or a you know call uh, uh, a video call where you know 20 of them 10 of them get together and engage uh, which which is something which you know we are also now getting better at as as we go along i get another question here do government regulations kick in when going digital uh, as in data localization absolutely i, I mentioned this uh, one of the things which is very important when you look at a service provider for uh, uh, your uh, your your digitization initiatives um, uh, one i would definitely encourage you uh, given uh, the current uh, you know uh, clarion call that that the government and the prime minister has made to go for uh, vocal for local and atmanirbhar bharat uh, obviously i would encourage you to consider uh, uh, indian companies and indian solutions uh, but even beyond that uh, you need to look at what happens and to your data and where it is stored and who accesses your data right if you are uh, uh, you know working uh, on digitizing your your uh, your business it makes good business sense as well to work with an indian company because you know that the company has to store data and it will store data in india uh, not that a lot of foreign companies don't do it a lot of them do but possibly some of them don't do it and don't do it fully right uh, so you want to be doubly sure that you know your data is safe your data is secure and uh, your uh, uh, service provider is adhering to all the uh, rules uh, that the government has laid out uh, so that's that's one thing which i would definitely recommend uh, a controversial question uh, which says is the finance function typically falling behind when it comes to digital transformation uh, i wouldn't necessarily say that the finance function is falling behind uh, but i would say that you know finance is typically uh, a function in businesses which is always trying to look at least in india that i have seen is always trying to look and in smes is trying to look to save cost so if a solution is not able to demonstrate a very clear return on investment uh, most you know cfos or most head of finances are going to hesitate to invest uh, you know money uh, in digitization i think that's where owners and promoters uh, ceos have a very important role to play uh, to look beyond just the uh, immediate cash flow impact and to look at it from a strategic uh, perspective uh, and to say that if we do digitize our businesses how is it going to impact our our, our uh, outlook in the next 5 10 20 years right so that's that's how i would uh, say this is where uh, i would like to end i think i have answered all questions uh, that came across uh, there's one question which i would like to take which has come from jalgaon which is uh, which says that you know there's 
what are the concerns around data privacy my information coming online your information is already online uh, you may not know it uh, but your information uh, my friend has already come online uh, because you are online you are you know engaging with people uh, all the time online so there's no point in trying to uh, you know stay off the grid uh, uh, it, this is the new world and you we are better off embracing it rather than trying to fight it that's that's how i would uh, say Okay. So that's Please, it for my guests. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you so much, Avinash. Uh, I would uh, like to, you know, uh, actually applaud you because this was a very, very insightful session. And uh, we can see it from the questions which have come out, uh, the way you have explained how digitization, what are the advantages, disadvantages. Uh, from an SME point of view, specifically when the SMEs should go for digitization and why this is very much important from there, even if it comes to topics like MSME loan which is currently in need of that with a, a lot of MSMEs. Uh, I would like to thank the audience as well uh, for uh, participating today and showing such an active interest in the entire uh, webinar. Uh, lastly, I would uh, like to just add on that uh, we have partnered with Zagil um, at Yes Bank level. And for all of you customers who are there today on the webinar, we would be soon rolling out very interesting offers so that you can actually experience uh, how Zagil as a solution can help you uh, completely digitize your expense management, which can help you save uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, which can actually automate the entire process and uh, save you a lot of time, effort, as well as, uh, you know, uh, I'll just uh, leave it up to you to experience it. Uh, the way the process would be that we'll roll out these offers to you via your emails and SMSs. And for further uh, clarities, discussions, any confusions, etc., the Zagal team and YesBank team would be working along with each of you to uh, make this as a success for you. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much, Avinash. Thank you once again. And thank you for the audience as well. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.